Hello and thank you for joining this Wellington session within which we'll be providing you with the compelling reasons why APMO should have a PPM solution. And I'll also provide a brief overview of the Microsoft Project for the Web solution alongside the Wellington Accelerator Plus Power App. And before we do, I'm Baz Kinder, the Commercial Director of Wellington, and I've been involved in Microsoft PPM and PMOs now for slightly over 10 years. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Marissa Silva. Marissa, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello everyone, my name is Marisa Silva, Senior PPM Consultant at Wellington. I've been working, advising PMOs, speaking about PMOs for over 15 years, and I can say it's a, a passion of mine to power PMOs, to make them critical to business. Thank you very much, Marissa. So let's start with a short intro to Wellington before we get into today's topic. Well, we are Wellington, and our promise to you is that by taking up our services, your project and portfolio management capability will be improved and that is something that we provide with a money back guarantee and having been around since 2001 we've managed to collect quite a few accreditations over the last 20 or so years as you can see from the collection of badges being displayed on the screen we are headquartered in windsor with offices in ireland spain and india but we work globally to support our customers no matter where they are and uh, we do offer a wide variety of services that span consultancy, technology and training. The focus, again, being on helping our customers to improve their PPM capability from a variety of angles. And you can read more at wellington.co.uk. So please do follow that link and have a look through the website. And just before I move on to discussing Mark's project and Marissa talks about the reasons why a PMO should have a PPM solution, Here's a very quick look at some of the customers that we've worked with over the last 20 or so years. And there are a large number of case studies available on the website. So if you want to read them, just follow that link and that'll take you straight there. But Marissa, you're up and I'm going to give you control. Thank you, Baz. So let's then discuss why the PMO needs a PPM solution. So why is it? Uh, first of all, I should say that PMO in this context can mean project, program, portfolio office, um, not to concern what the P stands in PMO, providing that it enables better project management capabilities in the organization. Working in PMOs, we experience a number of challenges. So let me share a couple of the most frequent ones. First of all, I think we will all agree that there's a lot of change going on. Sometimes we don't know if uh, something should be classed as a project or if it is just a small piece of work or change that requires some governance. So what is the appropriate level of governance required? What is a project in the organization? As a consequence of it, people have been assigned a couple of tasks. But what are the priorities? If you have all this work going on around you, what matters the most? What should be done first? We also want to avoid doing the same mistakes on this new project that has just started. However, we are faced with a challenge that the lessons from previous projects, they are not easily available. So they are not uh, centralized. Sometimes they are documented, but not learned. Mm -hmm. Everyone is claiming to be overbooked. Teams are tired, they can be demotivated even. But how can we fix it if there's no central view on what everyone is doing, their assignments, on what future demand looks like, capacity planning? In the same way, of course, we want to empower better decisions. We are an enabling function that should provide that single source of truth in the organization. Yet, we are limited by the fact that we don't have visibility over dependencies, or we have massive spreadsheets to manage those dependencies and understanding what would be the impact on the projects. You want to have decisions that are informed rather than based on opinions only. So several challenges that we do experience in the PMOs. Fortunately, 89% of organizations do have a PMO. So this is based on the, the, one of the most recent state of project management surveys conducted by Wellington. Yet, the big question is around value. Is the PMO delivering as much value 
as it could be? Is it realizing the full potential of the organization? Unfortunately, that number is very different and most PMOs do struggle in providing um, that real value or in demonstrating the value that they are indeed delivering. So let's discuss how can the PMO turn those challenges into opportunities by considering the value life cycle of the PMO. On the screen, you can see some examples of uh, common roles and what are uh, some of the challenges that they would experience. What's keeping them awake at night? What are the struggles that they face day to day on their projects? So for instance, from a team member perspective, the priority is changing all the time. Or from the point of view of the sponsor, approving projects without a clear business case or a clear priority. From the C-level, we have the view of not knowing where the annual budget is being invested on. Am I getting my bang for my buck or not? All those would represent what is valued by those customers, by those stakeholders. The PMO has then that uh, key role in trying to focus on what are those key pain points and turn those into opportunities for the PMO roadmap. So first of all, what are those challenges? Capturing the perception of value and then building services that will deliver that value. So this would mean building your service catalog, which will include having a, a portfolio register, having a register for risks, having, for instance, reports available that would help people to make better decisions, etc. In the same way, we should also be measuring our own value, measuring our own performance, identifying our own KPIs. That's the way that we'll know if we are being successful in our approach or not. And in the same way, we should be communicating value throughout that journey, demonstrating how we day to day can turn those challenges into opportunities through the services built by the PMO. A PPM solution is one of those services that can be included. So we have asked ChatGPT, uh, quite trendy nowadays, if PMOs would deliver more value using a PPM solution. The answer was a clear yes. And by the way, PPM solution stands for more than just pretty pictures for management, as we are going to see shortly. In fact, by having a PPM solution in place, PMOs can build that value by providing a centralized system on how the projects are managed within the organization. And we can even add building that triage approach of what is, is a project and what is a small piece of change that requires some governance. It can also improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the project management practices by building standardization, by ensuring that everyone is operating within common boundaries of governance but still with the necessary flexibility. And also by gaining visibility. How would I know if I'm on track or not? How would I know what is the, uh, the help of my portfolio? Or even how many um, thousands of pounds are at risk? By having a PPM solution in place, that's what I'll be gaining. Empowering data-driven decisions rather than just decisions based on who shouts the loudest, based on opinions. Facts instead, with a supporting good story provided by PPM. So some advantages that uh, ChatGPT has identified from a PPM solution. That improve visibility and oversight about the status of tasks, projects, programs, portfolios of work, as well as resources. Better resource allocation is indeed the next advantage. So knowing who is doing what, and also what are my gaps, what are the forecasts for future demand. Increase collaboration by ensuring that people can see what each others are doing, but also by uh, having central locations uh, through teams, through others, where uh, I can provide an update on my tasks or on my projects. Better alignment of projects with business objectives by ensuring that we have a portfolio that is optimal, that is delivering return on investment within my constraints on risk and within also my um, limited resources. And better risk management 
So risk management being one of the three R's that I mentioned before for portfolio management, resources, return, and now risk, to ensuring that the list of projects selected will be uh, within the risk appetite and tolerance of the organization is something that you can gain more visibility of through PPM solutions and also by, of course, having a common risk register available to all. This would be facilitated also by having improved reporting and analysis, ensuring that the PMO is spending its time on value-added activities like identifying trends, identifying key concerns, and being more proactive in their approach rather than just being reactive, reporting on um, status of projects that are out of date immediately after they are issued. So more focus on the analysis side. And Buzz, tell us more yes. how this can be done. Uh, thank you very much, Marissa, and uh, thank God for uh, chatbots and uh, AI helping us out with our presentations today. Uh, but some great insights, and uh, it's true that a lot of PMOs are powered by nothing more than uh, sellotape and uh, spreadsheets, but um, where we're going, we don't need spreadsheets. And I'm talking specifically about the latest and greatest version of Microsoft Project, which is Project for the Web. And um, I've got a handful of slides that I'm going to go through to really uh, explain what the solution is, how it kind of comes together. And I will also provide a brief demonstration of uh, the Accelerator Plus and Project for the Web. But I'm going to keep it brief. And the reason being that we have got individual sessions available on our YouTube channel uh, that provide a bit of a deep dive into both the Project for the Web solution, the native solution from Microsoft, the beginner's guide, essentially. And we do the same for the Accelerator Plus, which is a power app that I'm going to be talking about now. But first of all, why would you want to use Microsoft Project for the web? Well, like I said before, it's the current version of Microsoft Project. It has a long-term roadmap in place, and that means that it's benefiting from new features being rolled out on a regular basis, and you can go onto the Microsoft 365 roadmap portal and get visibility of what the new features are that are incoming. It's also been designed with a wider user base in mind. So rather than being geared purely for the use of professional project managers, even accidental project managers can get to grips with Project for the Web really quickly. And for those of you that are starting to, to use uh, Microsoft Teams quite extensively, you're probably already familiar with some of the benefits of groups integration, uh, as in you can go in, create groups, and within those groups, you can assign team members, share documents, have conversations going on, while well, Project for the Web dovetails into that quite nicely. So they are some of the benefits around Project for the Web. And uh, Project for the Web itself, it's designed to be extended with the Microsoft Power Platform. So when we look at the core scheduling engine, which is Project for the Web, and it'll make a lot more sense when I demonstrate it a bit later, but when we look at the scheduling components, that's what it is. So Project for the Web is a scheduling engine. It's where you can go along, plug tasks in, assign resources, create dependencies. It's where you do your planning. But if you're looking for a solution that is more PMO ready and you want to be able to do much more, you might want to be able to track things like stage gates governance. You might want to um, have a bit of control around resource assignments. You probably want to manage your raid logs and you also want access to additional related artifacts such as lessons learned, benefit trackers, change logs. Well, in order to give you access to all of that, we've got to build a solution in Power Apps and also use Power Automate for the workflow and Power BI for the reporting. And we've already built this solution. We call it the Accelerator Plus. And whilst I'm not providing a detailed overview of the Accelerator Plus through the slide decks, because I'd rather show it to you, you can see on the screen some of the uh, native functionality that we provide as a starter for 10. So there's quite a few things there and more being displayed on this page here. And again, I think um, a little less, uh, uh, conversation, a little more action is what we're going to head towards as I dive towards the demo. But before I do, I do want to point out very quickly some of the benefits of the Accelerator Plus solution. And uh, the first one, as I mentioned before, Project for the Web in isolation is nothing more than a scheduling engine 
by adding on the accelerator plus you get access to a PMO ready solution that is designed to power PMOs and other project focused teams. The second benefit, it can be customized and extended. So whatever I show you today is really a starting point and we might have some organizations that want to maybe scale it back. We'll have others that want to extend it further and uh, make it do more. Uh, again, either way, that's absolutely fine. What we provide is a starter for 10. Importantly, many, many organizations we deal with are using Microsoft 365. And this solution being a native Microsoft offering, really, it's deployed in your Microsoft 365 10. And uh, the final point, it only requires native Microsoft licensing. So obviously, if we think about the uh, Project for the Web solution, that is licensed through Microsoft by getting one of the relevant Microsoft project plans. But the Accelerator Plus itself is built using the Microsoft Power Platform. So that is the only licensing you require. So that might be Power BI, Power Apps, and uh, Power Automate tend to be bundled into Microsoft 365 in any ways. Um, so really the core licensing you're looking at is Microsoft Project Plan 1 or 3. You would also need Power BI and you would need Power Apps. So there is another slide that actually goes into licensing in a bit greater detail. Um, but uh, like I said before, we've got other videos available on our YouTube channel but do uh, go into a bit more detail than what I have done so far. But for now, I'll peel back the curtains. I love that transition. I don't know about you, Marissa, but that is my favorite transition. And what I'm going to do now is get rid of that and start showcasing my Accelerator Plus and Project for the Web environment. So this is the uh, solution that I've been talking about so far. We've landed here on the home page of the solution, which is displaying a bit of a dashboard. It's an interactive dashboard, and we did also publish a webinar uh, that uh, focused on different reporting options that are available within Project for the Web, and that is available on our channel, so do check it out. But this does provide interactive uh, dashboards and reports, and you can see here that I am drilling down into various components and visualizing the information as required. This is customizable. So if you want to configure this view, not a problem, you can do that. And uh, I think I mentioned earlier, these were Power Apps charts, but we can also make use of Microsoft Power BI, which is what the bulk of our customers are probably doing. I'm going to expand out the menu on the left-hand side, and you can see there's quite a wide array of options available. We can go and view a pipeline. It's also where uh, individuals are able to go in, submit ideas. We can do some prioritization, some scoring before approving those projects to become active and uh, initiatives that are being worked on. We have program management views. We can see individual projects. We can also go in, access the reports that are available in Microsoft Power BI. And I will showcase those shortly. And we also have a full complement there of raid logs and other management artifacts as well. Based on the time constraints that we have, I'm going to go straight into the project view and uh, I will give you a very quick tour of this portfolio overview, something that again is very important to any PMO. They want to get a quick oversight of all of the projects in one place and understand how they're performing and, and really focus in on the ones that need some attention and uh, assistance as, uh, as appropriate. So in this particular view, I'm looking at all active projects but I can go in, select from other global views, and you can also go in and configure your own views as well. And beyond that, we can also go in and group the information as appropriate. So we might want to group by project type. So it's easier to digest some of that information. And by the way, the views that I'm talking about, they're fully configurable. So if you want to uh, see specific columns being displayed or you want the visualizations to be displayed in a, in a particular way, that's fine, that is all doable. For now, I'm going to drill down into an individual project and I'll press the edit button there. And this is now a deep dive of this specific initiative, the Coro Health Assessment Tool Project. There's a lot to take in. And like I said before, we do have other videos that provide more of a deep dive into the overall solution. So I do advise you to check those out. And if you are viewing this video on YouTube, then if you look down below the description, you will find some handy links there.
But going back to this view, beneath the project title, we see a workflow that the project is going to be following. And we can set up as many templates as required. And each project type might have a unique workflow that it has to follow with the appropriate level of governance in place as well. And uh, that's not a problem. We can build in as many workflows and governance to work stages as required. But uh, looking at this planning stage, you'll notice that we've got various checklist items that need to be completed by the project manager before the project is then able to be uh, submitted for approval uh, onto the next stage. Below that, we see various tabs. And uh, again, there's a lot to take in, but starting with a summary page, it's where we are collecting some high-level details around this uh, specific initiative itself. And uh, the forms, again, configurable. If you want to drop in specific custom field, that's absolutely fine. And if you want people to be able to interact in a particular way, either by typing in free text or by selecting predefined values, again, that is not a problem. And this is uh, configurable as required. Beyond that, we also see some high-level output coming in from the schedule. We also see the outputs there of the latest status report that's been submitted. If I look at the uh, menu again along the top, I'm going to actually skip ahead and go into the task view. And up until now, we've been looking at the Accelerator Plus, which is where the PMO can go in, get deeper insights into the projects themselves. But of course, the project itself needs to be managed. You need to uh, add tasks durations and resources and that is done through project of the web which is embedded here nicely within the accelerator plus so it's a seamless view that you're getting and uh, project of the web itself does provide a number of out of the box views so there is a grid view which is pretty traditional and not dissimilar to microsoft project itself on the desktop we can also complement this with the timeline view which provides a interactive gantt chart overview of the project this project's already in flight, but I am going to very quickly move a few things around to demonstrate the interactive nature of how this interface works. Beyond this, we also then have the board view, which is identical to uh, Microsoft Planner, which will be music to the ears of people that are using Microsoft Planner already. This is exactly the same, but it comes with more functionality built in. And by the way, the three views that I've looked at all represent the same exact project but uh, displayed through different lenses. So some users might prefer to work in a board view, others in a grid, some in a timeline. This uh, view that I'm looking at is the standard view from the board view itself. So it gives me three buckets, not started, in progress and completed. And I can click and drag things around to reset the um, uh, states of a task. I can also drill down into these items and bring up this task information window whereby I can go in and do many of the things that I can do in some of the other views as well, such as add resources. I can label the tasks. I can add descriptions. I can also populate any of these standard or custom fields. And of course, I can also go in, add dependencies and add attachments. So you could upload something that's stored locally on your laptop, but you can also link to a Teams file or even to an external URL. Beyond this, again, conscious of the time frame uh, that we're currently working towards, I'm going to jump out of this specific view and go into Power BI. So I did mention earlier that I would demonstrate some of the standard reporting that we can provide with the Accelerator Plus. And this will give you a bit of an insight into the types of reports we can provide on day one. And of course, the reports themselves are also configurable. And uh, you might want additional reports and not being displayed here. That, again, is not a problem at all. So quite a suite of reports to get you started. I will go into some of these to provide a brief overview of what they look and feel like. And this, by the way, is, again, Power BI. Power BI is really flexible and, and really great at bringing together different data sources. So whilst the data source we're looking at here is exclusively from project for the web, you might have instances whereby you've got financial data on a, another system. It could be Dynamics, could be SAP, but you want to be able to visualize all the data in one place. And through Power BI, that is something that can be achieved. Uh, you'll notice here that I've opened up some filters along the top, so you can define different filters. And all of these chart elements that you see being displayed, they also act as filters as well. 
So typically a PMO will be interested in items that are maybe highlighted as being red, status or amber, and you'll be pleased to hear that we can click on those chart elements and fill out of a report as you've just seen. I'm going to demonstrate one or two other reports before we then wrap up and talk about next steps. But here is a very quick overview of all of the risks across the portfolio. And here I've clicked into the resource segment of this donut report and it's showing me all of the risks associated with resource management. One more, I'll show you the task overview. Again, a very detailed breakdown of all of the tasks that exist in the environment. And uh, here, for example, you probably want to look at the items that are again overdue. So click on that segment and you're getting a concise breakdown there of all of the projects that have got overdue tasks. And that gives you something to then go and investigate further. And the important thing with Power BI is because the reports are generated automatically, it means that you're spending your time analyzing the data as opposed to copying and pasting it into a spreadsheet or into PowerPoint for somebody else to go and look at. Right, I'm gonna go back to my slides and we can now talk about next steps. And again, I do apologize. I know that was a very quick tour of Project for the Web. There is much more for us to cover. So in order to uh, provide that overview, we can either provide you with a deep dive demo. And if you would like a bespoke demo, all you need to do is drop us a line using the details that are coming up. Otherwise, check out the other videos that I mentioned that are already available on our YouTube channel. And again, you will find some handy links in the description below. If you are pretty much set on deploying Project for the Web and you want to get a better idea of what an implementation might look like in your organization, as in what approach should be taken, what functionality would be deployed initially, we'd be more than happy to provide a envisioning workshop to talk through your pain points, to understand your priorities. And one of the outputs from there would be a overall implementation roadmap indicating how we would go about deploying, but we'd also provide you with a tailored proposal that outlines the uh, approach, effort, and associated cost. And for anything else, whether it's PMOs or technology, get in touch using the details that are about to come up. And again, a very quick plug there for our YouTube channel. I'm not going to talk about it, the URL's displayed. Please do go and take a look. And uh, last but not least, here are our contact details. So. You can either email myself or Marissa using the email addresses displayed. You can also search for us on LinkedIn and you can search for me by either typing in Baz Kinder and, uh, and, and finding me that way. You can also type in that URL and, and similarly for Marissa, but uh, Marissa goes by her alter ego, which is the Lucky PM. Um, so you can either find Marissa by typing that in or by typing in her name. Whilst you are on LinkedIn, do also give Wellington a follow. We do share a lot of content on a daily basis. We share details about upcoming events as well as useful insights around PPM and PMO generally. And of course, YouTube. But uh, from me and from Marissa, that is all. We hope you found this uh, session useful. And Marissa, before we do end, have you got any uh, final words you would like to add? No, just to thank everyone for your time, for your, um, hope you enjoyed the session. And please do get in touch. Thank you. Yes, please do. Thank you all and have a great day ahead.